Okay, folks, here's the plan. I just moved to a new apartment and it comes with one of those doorbell things, intercoms, I don't know what you would call it, where a person presses a button, it calls a phone number that's configured in the intercom and that phone number then has to press a button to let them in. It hooks you up with a phone call, so it's almost like getting a phone call and you can let people in. Obviously, I hate phone calls and I have no intention of ever answering my phone. So I'm going to build an app that lets me do this through a, through a UI interface. So the idea is that I would get a notification on my phone and I would, let me do this thing. So the idea is that I would get a notification on my phone, see it pop up, press on the notification and it would give, it would let me say yes or no to let the person in after the system itself would get information from the person on who they are, what they want and why I should let them in. I'm gonna use Twilio to do that part and serverless to handle the requests, I'm hoping. So since I haven't, uh, hey fuzzy buddy, haven't seen you in a while. So I'm going to sketch out how this system would work. I'm gonna try doing it in the visual code scratch pad because I don't have anything handy to draw with. Yes, fuzzy buddy, this is the new place. The office isn't really set up yet, but that's it behind me and it's much bigger and nicer and I'm hoping to have it set up properly very soon. I'm still using my old super tiny desk, so that's kind of a bummer. So here's, here's the basic flow. Doorbell app, doorbell app flow. So we're gonna start with, um, the starting point is person rings the buzzer. And then the buzzer, oh, that's, this is going, oh nice. So this might be a little annoying, person rings the buzzer and then what happens is that uh, buzzer calls phone number, phone number that phone number then is going to be uh, Twilio accepts call. So Twilio accepts the call, Twilio connects, uh, Twilio accepts the call and Twilio answers with, Twilio answers with welcome who are you and what do you want? Okay, so Twilio does that. And then, um, Buzzer, but now Buzzer and Twilio and, well, what was that? Buzzer and Twilio are now in a phone call. Twilio accepts call, Twilio, oh, okay. So we need another step here. Buzzer and Twilio backend are in a phone call. So then Twilio sends, Twilio sends voice. We can, we can do, I know, I, I know this works because I've built it before with a Slack bot for my office and now I'm doing it for home with a phone because I think that's gonna be easier for me and my girlfriend to use. So Twilio sends voice, welcome, who are you and what do you want? Um, person at, at buzzer answers, Twilio accepts, Twilio accepts voice recording, and then Twilio transcribes this, Twilio transcribes uh, into text, then backend sends push notification. Should I build it with a te with text first? Because I feel like getting a, an SMS would actually be easier than, hmm. Should we skip the entire app process and just have it with text? Hmm, what do you guys think? Okay, let's try, let's do it this way first. Backend, let's do SMS first. Doorbell app flow. Is Twilio a paid service? Yes, Twilio is a paid service, but it's very, very cheap. Um, via SMS first, React Native later. I think text, yeah, slide, slinging divs, I think you're right. 
SMS is going to be easier and it means I don't have to figure out how to deploy an app because I have totally forgotten how to do that. Backend sends SMS, sends SMS to recipient numbers. Uh, SMS contains transcript, contains transcript. SMS contains link to audio. Wow, my N key is messing up a lot. So link to audio. Uh, me or me or my girlfriend answer with yes or no and then Twilio receives reply and then Twilio sends sends correct uh, what's it called sends correct dial tone to buzzer buzzer opens the door okay so we're gonna start with that it's going to be SMS based at first because that's going to be easier and it means that we can be done in the next couple of hours the react native part feels complicated and difficult because it's been a long time since I've done react native and I think this is the minimum viable product service or what you, whatever you would want to call it. So we're going to go on GitHub and start a new project because that is always a good thing to do. So new doorbell app. Let's see, doorbell app. Uh, person ans answer the buzzer as a answer the front gate buzzer w via SMS uses serverless and Twilio okay oh let's zoom in a little bit so that it's easier to see what's going on should we initialize with a readme sure and let's also say we want a node.js git ignore yeah and a license of let's do mit because i'm nice okay so create repository doorbell app perfect and now i'm going to clone this thing git clone doorbell app and i think i already built something like this earlier couple years ago maybe we can make that implementation okay so we have the buzzer go to doorbell app and we're going to make a new a new folder for the backend stuff because we are planning in the future to maybe have a react native interface or something like that so I'm gonna start with a backend folder so that I can keep them separate make their backend go into the backend and we're going to need what do we need here we're gonna need the serverless yaml file and we're also going to need i think that's gonna be it for now so let's say touch serverless oh we also need ts config so very important lesson i always learn is you need it's easier to work with TypeScript when you're doing uh, backend stuff. Hey, Cesar Gonzalez. I'm, go I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? Touch serverless. No, I didn't touch that, did I? Okay. LS. Cool. So we're going to copy from a different repo project. I really need to make some initializers for this stuff, but I haven't yet. So we're going to go into s documents. Uh, random coding let's see what should we take the spark joy app has a backend and it has a ts config json that we're going to copy to here and let's also copy the serverless yamls just so that life is a little easier and we call yarn init on the backend repository so that we can have a separate package json for the backend and the frontend 
question name uh, doorbell app backend version one sure description the backend uh, answer the front gate buzzer via SMS and sir the front gate buzzer oh, come on computer front gate buzzer via SMS uh, entry point is going to be this slash I don't eh, it doesn't really need an entry point repository URL is this guy doorbell app the author is moi a license MIT private new okay so now I can go open the backend repository or the backend project go into random coding doorbell app backend we open that thing let's see will it open it opened yay and we can go into package JSON we don't have a main what we do have though is a build script so let's do scripts what what is that okay so scripts we're going to have a build script that runs uh, TSC and then we're going to have a deploy script that does N npm run build and SLS deploy okay so that's the that's the initial um, package JSON stuff we have. Um, so the two terabyte of data, let me show you. The two terabyte of data, I had to, um, I had to restart the download because my, well, I didn't start the download from scratch. It's just my computer shut down and I had to run Qubit Torrent again. And it is currently at 87% of just checking how much I've downloaded. I've actually downloaded about 97%. So we're probably going to play with this next week. For now, we're going to build this project so that I can answer the phone next week when my sofa comes. Uh, let's see. We have serverless YAML. We're going to call this the doorbell app. We're using runtime node. Uh, what is it? Is it 12.x already? I think AWS latest node Lambda. What is the latest node I can use on Lambda.js? That's support for Lambda 10, for node 10. That's for me. Oh, now supports node 12. Nice. Come on, go back. There we go. So node 12, we... Twelve is the latest Node.js twelve point X perfect, and for the stage, I'm going to say we're going to have just the dev stage for now. We don't have any environment variable environment variables just yet. We don't need IAM role statements for the different uh, DynamoDB tables, and we don't have any resources just yet. What we do have though is a function that says, uh, what should the function be? Answer door, answer, answer call. Let's call it the answer call function. And the answer call function is going to be answer call and the handler, which let's see, answer call from the, from get, perfect. So we are answer call handler, answer call, get, perfect. And now I need the source directory, make their source and touch source answer call.ts. Perfect, so I go to source slash answer call ts and here I need to define a export um, What's it called? We called it answer call handler. Export handler. Yeah. So export const handler equals a function that is going to get stuff. Cool. Now I'm going to also need, what else do I need for the AWS Lambdas to work? 
I need the I need some packages, but I always forget what they are. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna copy this from a different project I have because I always forget what it is what it's called. Give me a second. So I'm gonna go to Yup Services. That's the thing with starting a new project. You don't very answer call is misspelled. God damn it, you're right. It is move source password call to source answer call dot yes. And yes, I'm waiting for a new keyboard to show up. Uh, I've ordered it a while ago, but they're not shipping yet. So I'm still waiting. <laughs> yeah, next week we'll have the big data set. So let me see. We need the gateway. Okay, so yarn, add AWS Lambda and add types AWS Lambda. Okay, so that's installing. Perfect. And we are going to open answer call TS and this will be an async method. So I'm cop I'm kinda cheating a little bit right now, but it's important to be able to cheat like that. Because it really does make your life easier. We get the event event that's an API gateway. Come on. API gateway event. And now my computer is being weirdly slow. Why is that not? Uh, import API gateway event from AWS Lambda. All right, so we've got that. We can now try to, what does the response have to look like? Let's try just returning a value. So we're going to say status 200. Hey, Robin Malfat, Malfate. I don't know how to pronounce that. So status 200 and body, hello live stream. By the way, should if you can't read this, please let me know so I will zoom in. Now let's try yarn deploy and see if this gets set up and it should answer with hello live stream when we go to the URL. In the meantime, while that's deploying, we can go to twilio.com twilio.com All right, twilio.com. Will you open? Uh, do I already have an account? I'm pretty sure I have an account already. Let's see. TechOps, yep, nope. Let's sign up for free then. Sign up. Uh, Swiss it's Stellar, blah, generate. Oh, I already have an account. Then why didn't you show me an account here? Okay, Swizzits at Swizzits.com. Next, uh, what is my password? Okay, filled in. It's not gonna be the right password, is it? Nope. Um, let's see, this one. Manage passwords. Term. Twilio, come on, Twilio. Oh, you know what? I should hide my screen for this because you're about to see my password. And I don't want you to see my password. Come on. Can I log in? Okay. Got my password. Let's see if it actually works. Log in. Okay, I can show you my screen again. There we go, that worked. Okay, so I'm gonna have to update that in Twilio. Add, yes, perfect. Uh, ba -bum. Oh, wow. I have $14 overpaid for my Twilio, perfect. So we're going to create a new phone number for this. Do I already have any phone numbers? I do not, okay. 
So I'm going to buy a phone number. Oh, I can hide this. Let's see. Burr, burr, burr. We needed to have SMS and voice. And let's search for that. Okay, I definitely need to install some sound stuff in this apartment because everything my girlfriend's doing downstairs sounds like she's doing it right into my ears. No, it's fine. <laughs> oh, you insist you take a nap? Okay, so I have this phone number now. I'm going to save it here just so I don't forget. Buy this number. And now anyone who calls this phone number will get a, well, for starters, they're not going to get anything. So friendly name, that's going to be, let's give it doorbell at uh, apartment doorbell. I almost wrote out, wrote out my address here. Apartment doorbell. I do not want everyone to know my home address. When a call comes in, a hook is going to go to this brand new address that we have created here. So we're going to set that up in a little bit. First, let's try that the basics are working and we have a Lambda that answers to requests. So it should say hello live stream. It says instead internal server error. Interesting. Let's go figure out why it's giving us an internal server error. Are we, we're answering get through, okay. So, why is this uh, throwing a server error? We're gonna go into AWS and look at CloudWatch. My account. Come on, come on, I clicked that. AWS Management Console. Let's see. Mm. Okie doke. S3 billing Lambda. Oh no, CloudWatch. CloudWatch. We go there. Now, let's see. What will CloudWatch say? Will it load? There we go. Logs. Ooh, that's new. Synthetic service lens contributor insights. Wow. Uh, log groups, we need to find this one, app, app dev answer call, and it doesn't look like there were any errors, I just suck at knowing the shape of the response that I need. So let's look at the shape of the response that I used here, this returns a, let's see, Success, so that's in utils. What does success look like? Utils, I always forget this part, it's so annoying. Ah, oh, it's not status, it's status code. Okay, so we're gonna deploy that again. In the meantime, I'm going to take this and we're gonna go into Twilio and set it up. So when a call comes in, we send a webhook to this API with a post request. We're going to deal with that here. And that then... Uh, oh, and we're also going to have to configure messaging. Okay, that's going to be interesting. So we're going to deal with that in a little bit. Caller name lookup. No, we don't need that. Call status changes. What's that? Status callback webhooks allow you to receive HTTP events from related phone number updates. We don't need that. Save. So this is our answer call handler. Number was successfully updated. And we're going to... Now let's see. Now I need the Twimmel API. So Twimmel uh, to answer a call. Twimmel for programmable voice. Perfect. Okay. So we've got that. Now if I go to this get request, I should get a hello live stream now. Perfect. It says status code 200, hello live stream. So now we need to figure out how we can see the type of event that we got. API gateway event is okay, it's body, proxy, path, HTTP method. Perfect. So we're going to say, 
if event uh, yes if event dot http method equals let's do to lo to lowercase just in just in case if that is a post event uh, Julio sent us a phone call phone call assumed to be but a uh, gate buzzer gate buzzer box otherwise we're going to just return a hello uh, perform hello la let's add an emoji because I like emojis so it's going to answer with a wave this is meant to be this URL this URL is meant to be used via a buzzer box phone call you probably don't want to be here okay so that's going to be the default response if you go to the URL with a get request we're going to also add a post request handler here method get method post is going to be answer call uh, same method although I guess we could have totally hmm. oh no 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 that's fine so path answer call this goes here uh, someone got got here with a browser okay so now this is going to let's see Twilio sends us a phone call we're going to reply to that phone call with what are we going to reply with say hello to an inbound caller perfect we're going to use node.js and uh, how do I install this there's bound to be a um, I want to see th there's bound to be an, a node API a node API for Twilio let's see node Twilio node Twilio the Twilio node helper library perfect that's what I need Twilio node.js libraries what's it called npm install twilio oh git status git at dot git status git commit minus a minus m uh, we don't want this to be in vim dot git ignore this git status perfect git oh come on git at dot git commit minus a minus m we said that we have a basically working uh, lambda handler basic basic lambda handler okay so we've got that now we're going to install the Twilio library just in case we need it yarn at Twilio then in your code we can do blah uh, we're going to need for sending SMS messages, server side only, not front end. For authenticating the client, creating a new record, iterating, handling exceptions. Okay, let's look at Twimmel now. Per -per -per so we're going to import voice response from. Twilio, or actually let's import Twimmel from, right? Twimmel, Twimmel from Twilio, and let's see if we can yarn add uh, type definitions. Uh, hey, Cosmin Savisu, yes, I stream on Facebook, Twitter, Facebook, Periscope, uh, YouTube, and Twitch. So wherever you prefer watching, you can see me there. I am trying to figure out how to get on IGTV as well. That would be really cool. I just haven't invested the time to figure that out yet. But I'd be, that would be cool. So yeah, you don't have to watch on Facebook if you don't like Facebook. Uh, yarn, we said yarn add at types slash Twilio. Let's see if that exists. Perfect. 
awesome we have those types and here we're going to do what well first we can just start with responding with a hello world right so we're going to call um, we are now at where's the scratch pad so if I open the scratch pad scroll all the way down we are now here in this part so we've Twilio has accepted the call and now we're going to have to now we're answering the call with Twilio so we're going to handle uh, buzzer call like that and we're going to define that function down here so async function handle the oh, command handler buzzer call async function handle buzzer call I don't know yet what the uh, Aha, we're gonna need to return that. So we return handle buzzer call, and this is going to for now return. Let's see. Return, we're going to say const voice. Okay, blah, blah. blah. Const response, come on. So it turns out that the letter N is in a lot of English words and it's really slowing me down that it doesn't work very well on my keyboard. So we say new twimmel dot voice response and then we return, what's it complaining about? Oh yes, I did mean to include new. New Twilio twimmel voice, voice response and we say, we add response dot say Hello live hello live stream this is Twilio okay and we're going to return status code 200 and the body is going to be response dot to string so I'm going to try deploying this and then calling the phone number with my phone and we're going to then design the entire flow uh yarn deploy yarn deploy and we'll see if it works i'm pretty sure it's going to kind of work but we'll see okay so that's deploying what else do we need we're going to have a dial in queue autopilot hang up leave pause prompt pay play okay so that's gonna be interesting. So I'm gonna, while we're waiting for the deployment, I'm gonna write out the flow of, of what needs to happen here. Um, steps to handle. So one, say hello, prompt for a name. For a name purpose. Two, um, record, record response. Three, uh, transcribe response, transcribe response. Four is, so we're going to transcribe the response, then we're going to uh, pause call. Five sent text to swizzets six wait for reply seven send dial tone to a phone call okay so this part is going to be tricky but i'm hoping we'll be able to figure it out mm. There's a part here where things break down because this is in a lambda. So it might end up being expensive to run just because it's going to have to keep the lambda alive for a long time. But I should now be able to call this phone number and get a response that says, hello, live stream. This is Twilio. Um, 
Okay, so I'm calling the phone number. Let's see, keypad. We have 205, oh, and let me put this on speaker. 205-525-8990, call, speaker. We are sorry, an application error has occurred. Goodbye. Okay, so they are very sorry, an application error has occurred. Interesting. So what was the application error? We can go into CloudWatch and see what happened. Da, 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 da. Here, latest duration. I don't know what happened. Does Twilio give us, let's see, Twilio Cloud, blah. Can we test this stuff? That would be cool. Calls log, messages log, events log. Okay, calls log. No, outgoing calls, events log, phone number updated, phone number created, uh, phone numbers, programmable voice. Does that have a log? So I'm trying to figure out where exactly something broke. Okay, we got an inbound call. And can I see incoming five second duration? That's this one, right? That's my phone number, yeah and I call this thing. Twilio is unable to process the content type of the provided URL. Please see Twilio's documentation on accepted content types. Aha. So the response was application JSON with no body. Okay. So what we can do is, let's see, what can we do? How can we debug this? This part is going to be a little bit painful, but I think we can pull it off. Okay, let's see. Let's try console logging all of this. So console log. I'm gonna console log this stuff. And then we're gonna see what happened? Why did it get an application? Okay, I'm gonna have to yarn deploy again. And it would be, this would be a great time for me to figure out how to test locally. But I don't feel like I have the, I don't feel like doing that right now. Okay, so that's deploying. And as soon as we get that working, we can then start on the other parts. Let's see how Twinmal works. Say hello to an inbound caller, Twinmal elements. Say play, dial, play an audio file, record the caller's voice, gather, collect the digits, blah. Hang up in queue, add the caller to queue of callers, leave, pause, redirect, refer reject autopilot Ooh, ai powered conversational ivr that's pretty cool um okay programmable voice okay so that deployed i'm gonna call them call my thing again and we're gonna see what happened so calling you're sorry an application error has occurred goodbye all right so there was an application error let's you're see sorry yes, an application yes. error has occurred. okay fine fine okay reload the page come on page reload yourself status code xml that should work response say hello live stream Status code 200, okay. So that should work. Why isn't it then? Mm. Let's see, Twilio, no Twilio programming, Twilio console. If we go back to call logs. Come on, call logs, incoming. So that was the error. Completed, let's see. 
Request inspector. No, no body. Come on. Arr. Okay, my computer's starting to get slow, which is annoying. How is the download going? Okay, it's still checking and verifying the download invalid content type. And it's because we are returning application JSON. What does it expect? Supported MIME types. Accepted MIME types. Video, image, application, text. Uh, okay. Twilio is unable to process the content type of the provided URL. Documentation on accepted content types. What it, does anyone know the XML content type? XML is XML in here somewhere? Twimmel. Twimmel overview. Is that what I was looking at earlier? Yes, it was. Um, Twilio makes HTTP requests to your application just like a regular web browser with this format, parameters and values in its request. You can configure the URLs, note cannot request parameters. SMS SID, account SID, from, to, body, new media. What is the response it, it per blah. Dates and times, responding to Twilio. It's a well-behaved HTTP client. Application XML, Dan hey Daniel Parathan, I haven't seen you in a while. Okay, I'm gonna try application XML. I'm just not sure. So it is supposed to return status code body. Can it return headers? Uh, AWS Lambda respond with XML. I keep returning XML. I know that that's possible. I just need to look at, look up how. Mm. Err, method response header named content type. What? Context done, input, API gateway. Where do I put headers? Uh, Lambda proxy integration, event has extra information, done now, body, my XML. Aha, there we go. I knew that was that's what I was need. I mean, I figured that's what it was going to be. I just wasn't sure. So let's see. Content. Content. Type. Application slash XML. And I'm going to get yarn deploy. And while that's deploying, we can do what? We can figure out what my old project was called where I was already kind of doing this and maybe that will help us do it faster. Mm, what did I call it? It was something to do with door, I think, because I'm not... Door answer Slack bot. There we go. That was the one. Wow, 2016. And it has an issue. Our perm, this was back then done with bin routes routes users eh. no index there we go so this is how i did it when i got a call i got a caller said twimmel twimmel response and then i set things and then i recorded okay perfect so this was built with express right now we're not using express this is my old uh, my old implementation and I'm trying to make it better now or at least easier to use so that I don't have to involve slack okay come on come on computer so we're going to respond say 
that then I'm going to while I'm doing that I can this is gonna be difficult because I'm not sure how to keep the lambda alive so we're going to respawn say hello live stream this is Twilio then we're going to response dot record and the recording is going to need what it's going to need uh, okay we're gonna deal with recording later let's get the basics working first so I'm gonna call the number again and we'll see if it now says that it works hello live stream this is Twilio yes okay so that worked we got a response from the lambda now the next step is um, um, let's see what's the next step the next step is transcribing and stuff so let's go back to the twiml documentation and look for record recording resource recording transcription what is that? Um, download the helper library from blah. Your account said an auth token. Danger, this is insecure. Yes, I know. Represents the transcribed text and metadata from a transcribed recording of a voice call. Okie doke how do we let's do let's find twimmel record first twimmel record twimmel voice record so that's going to be the first thing we need to do the record web verb records the caller's voice and returns to you the url of a file containing the audio you can optionally generate text transcriptions of recorded calls by setting the transcribed attribute of the record verb to true. Okay. Cool. So let's see. Response record. Let's say timeout 10. No, let's do timeout 60 seconds. Timeout 60 transcribe is true. And then this is going to do what so we're going to re return that now where does relative or absolute url method timeout finish on key any digit max length play beep true false trim silence do not trim recording relative or absolute url statics callback transcribe transcribe callback Action. The action attribute takes a relative or absolute URL as a value. When recording is finished, Twilio will make a GET or POST request to this URL, including the parameters below. If no action is provided, record will default to requesting the current document's URL. After making this request, Twilio will continue the current call using the Twimmel received in your response. Perfect. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to handle the buzzer call. So, yes, handle buzzer call, and we're going to give it an action of, uh, instead of answer call, it's going to be accept uh, recording. Okay, and I'm, I'm hoping that's gonna work and it's going to just figure it out from being a relative URL. Uh, we'll see. We'll see if that works. So now we need to create a accept recording uh, get rec handler. So let's see how we did we do it here. Here we got call recording, router post call recording call sid. Okay. So we're going. We have a accept. Now we need an accept recording. So we go here. No, one more down. Uh, accept recording this is going to be handler 
handler dist slash accept recording dot handler so this is going to have a bunch of lambda functions right and the event for this one is going to be minus HTTP we're going to get path accept recording recording come on accept recording method post and I'm going to allow course Wow, this is apparently not a very interesting live stream for everyone. People are dropping left and right. But that's okay. So we accept the recording on the accept recording path. We make a new file. Import again API gateway event, right? Yeah, API gateway. Come on, gateway event from AWS Lambda and we export const handler come on handler that gets an API gateway event event blah and it's going to return oh and it needs to be async export const async eh. uh, this we called accept recording.ts okay export so const handler equals const handler equals async event api gateway event and this is going to let's see what do we do with it for now let's just um, print it out const recording url yes so we're going to so it's going to continue the call so we have to import a Twilio a twimmel again so we import twimmel here and then we return a status code 200 and I'm going to copy the header stuff now hmm let's make a util function let's make um export const send twimmel yes send twimmel equals a method that gets the twimmel stuff uh, yeah twimmel and it's going to be return um, status code 200 and we set headers or where are we headers and the body is going to be body is twimmel dot to string like that utils dot ts so this is going to just be a helper method that we can use for various things and we're going to say that this is a voice response right what is the let's see what's the type of this a voice response twimmel which is a voice response and we get voice response from import voice response from twilio no twilio slash twimmel no uh, why let's see where is this defined twimmel voice response twimmel interface uh, okay so it's twilio twimmel interface voice response or actually it just needs to be a twimmel interface cool so we import that to keep Twimmel interface there we go all right so that works Twimmel Twimmel to string we can now change that in answer call here we're going to return what did we say it was send Twimmel yeah send Twimmel with our response and we gotta import send Twimmel so import send 
import send the twimmer from dot slash utils like that and we go into accept recordings we get that stuff and here we're going to send twimmer response okay send twimmer response and we say const response equals new twimmer dot voice response and it's going to be response say thank you okay so response say thank you why so it's saying that the types aren't matching what if i do twimmer interface dot voice response that that does that work is a type but not a namespace did you mean to retrieve the type of the property voice response with ah okay can i do that then oh nice that works cool um so maybe we should call that send no that's fine twimmel interface voice response send twimmel answer call this is now going to say um hello what do you want um what should what should the default message be something nice welcome to welcome to our place what do you want answer after the beep okay so i'm going to deploy this and then uh send twimmel response what are you complaining about voice response is not assignable to parameter of type type voice response provides no match what oh come on why is typescript being difficult about this that's annoying okay i'm just gonna change this to an any then if you're good if typescript is going to be bothersome like this any is bad but this is a hack project anyway okay so we've got the hack project answer call ts that's going to our uh, perm okay so mm -hmm. except recording this is handling this part send text to swizzets wait for reply send dial tone to phone call response say thank you now let's uh, deploy this yarn deploy and then we're going to see if it works oh so it should be answer after the beep then press any key all right let's see what happens now i feel like when I write a blog post about this, I should include some schematics and charts that will be useful, right? Just uh, or like flow charts, at least flow diagrams. Oh, shit, that's what I forgot to do. I need to here console log the event console log event. Otherwise, I won't be able to debug what's going on. Okay, we deploy again. Now we have to wait for like a minute, maybe two minutes, and then see what happens. So in the old implementation, I got the call, then I got the recording. Um, then I sent the things to the Slack. And when I got the response that, yeah, that's going to be the hard part. No, when I get the response from when I get a response from my text messages, the hard part is going to be knowing wh what to do, uh, like which phone call to attach it to, like where to reply. All right. 
Nice. Losing viewers left and right. But that's that's how backend projects go. They're not very in like they're fun to build, but they sometimes aren't that interesting to watch because there's a lot not a lot of visual stuff going on. But I still think this is an interesting hack, right? Even though we're just putting um what's it called? We're just putting APIs together. Okay. Come on, computer. Are you done yet? All right. So I now have a bunch of lambdas set up. There's now two lambdas, and I can, if I now call the f uh, the phone number, let's see, calling. Welcome to our place. What do you want? Answer after the beep, then press any key. Hello, this is the live stream speaking. We are sorry, an application Damn. error has occurred. Okay. Bye. Well, that was close. We got the the second lambda, the accept recording lambda, errored out. Now, now let's see why did that error out. Um, did it actually? Well, it did deploy. So if we go to the app dev answer call, actually no, we should have app dev accept recording resource accept recording. So that worked but then it did not reply correctly. Why did it not reply correctly? If we go into the Twilio console and look at the call logs, let's see, incoming, completed, and we got the recording. So if I press play now. Hello, this is the live stream speaking. Okay, so that part worked. We got the recording uh, of the thing, but then when I, then it went on to send that recording to my Lambda and that's the part that failed. Post here, this one. So why did this fail? We got the application JSON headers and the response and the request. Why? Oh, that's why it failed. Because I didn't return anything. So I created the response with the status code and everything but I didn't return it. Also, this is pretty cool. I can see the entire uh, progress of events on Twilio. Now, while we're here, we can look at what Twilio sent us. We got the post, multi-value headers, user agent, request context. We have res resource path. And then in the body, we have, what is this? Er, call status in progress, mountain view, something. Okay, so we're gonna need to parse this as a query string. Er, let's see. So I'm gonna go into node. And now while I'm in node, please let me know if you can't read what I'm typing. Node, we're going to say const query string equals er, string equals require what require query string like that and then we have query string dot what does query string give us I think that should be able to parse things yes parse and we send in this entire body and the reason I know it's uh, a query string is because it's URL form encoded something, which is a type of query string. So we get uh, recording URL, that color county, country, direction, color state to zip, call SID. This is where we're going to have to reply uh to api version recording sid from my phone number caller recording duration seven seconds to hmm where do we get the the transcription from though because that's what would be very useful hello this is the okay that's that where does the transcript go 
let's see uh, request parameters recording URL recording duration digits method finish on key max length trim the re request the recording status blah status callback event transcribe the transcribe attribute tells Twilio that you would like a text representation of the audio of the recording Twilio will pass this recording to our speech-to-text engine and attempt to convert the audio to human readable text. The transcribed option is off by default. If you do not wish to perform transcription, simply do not include the transcribe attribute. We are saying we want to transcribe. Transcription is a paid feature. Uh, your account will be charged. See the pricing page? How much does it charge for transcriptions? This could get expensive. Okay, voice pricing, United States, transcription is 5 cents per minute. I think I can survive that, uh, considering I'm not going to have that many people coming to the thing. Transcription is currently limited to recordings initiated via Twimmel. Transcribe callback attribute is used in conjunction with it. It allows you to specify a URL to which Twilio will make an asynchronous post request when the transcription is complete. This is not a request for Twimmel and the response will not change call flow, but the request will contain the standard Twimmel. If transcribe callback is specified, then there is no need to do the other thing. Okay. Mm. So this is a problem. When we get can we get the transcription source with the rest api aha transcriptions so we have the recording url that's our e does anything here talk about transcription it doesn't does it and the transcription text itself is the result of converting blah client transcriptions then console log date created hmm fetch a transcription resource but i don't have the id do i i just have the recording id uh. Okay, that's annoying. Sid, read multiple transcription resources, list all transcriptions, delete a transcription resource, delete a transcription. So, how to modify calls in progress? That would be useful. Let's see what we get if we... Uh, so action accept recording. So if the transcription one will have the thing... Okay, let's, let's try a transcription callback and we're going to have accept recording and accept transcription. So transcribe callback is going to be accept transcript, transcript like that. And we're going to C, uh, cp source accept recording to source accept transcript, accept transcript.ts. And let's see, accept recording accept transcript this one though is going to just return uh, a status code 200 let's go 200 and a body of success it's not going to create a response but it is going to console log the event so that i can see if this gives us all of the information that we need to actually um what was I going to say? 
to all of the information we need to then continue the phone call with the API, because that would also be useful. So I'm going to response say thank you per, so this should response say thank you, and then it should pause the, it should pause, thank you, someone will let you in um, right away. And we say response dot pause, and let's pause them for how much, how long should we have? Should someone will let you in with the, uh, right away? Response pause pr -pr -pr -pr. length, let's say 60 seconds, and then we'll say response say looks like nobody's home. Uh, looks like nobody answered. Try again. Okay, looks like nobody answered. Try again. So it basically tells them to wait for 60 seconds and then uh, says stuff again. If in the meantime we let them in, we break up the call and uh, go down a different path where we actually let them in. So I'm going to yarn deploy this again. And I have a feeling that people who are watching this stream are starting to get lost. It's a kind of um, pause call. So yes, this pauses the call. And then 4.1, if call still going, tell visitor to try again. And then this one is going to uh, send text to me, wait for a reply and then send a dial tone to the phone call so that we can let people in. Let's see if that's gonna work. I'm not sure it's gonna work. Well, it's not gonna work just yet but it's going to have the basic flow ready. Okay, updating stack, checking st stack update progress. I should probably change the title of this stream because we're not really using any React Native, are we? Do, do, do. Okay. Oh shit, I forgot to send, set, blah. We need to have here accept transcript. Accept transcript and I'm gonna have to deploy again. Accept transcript, accept transcript, accept transcript, come on. Transcript, yarn, Yarn, deploy. Okay. Cool. Let's see, how is the torrent going? It's still checking. So my torrent is soon gonna start downloading the data that I have for next week. Now let's see if this manages to deploy and then I'm gonna try it again with the phone call and we'll see what happens. Okay, so that's doing all of the things. Oh, yeah, this part is kind of tedious, I know. Mm hmm. Okay, come on. Come on, computer. Uh, yeah, I know this part is tedious. I really need to figure out how to test locally, but the problem with testing serverless locally is that it's never quite exactly the same as what you're running in production, which then causes all sorts of 
weird problems and inconsistencies. But it's almost there. Come on. All right, so we have answer call, accept recording, and accept transcript. Welcome to our place. What do you want? Answer after the beep, then press any key. Hi, this is us. Thank you. Someone will let you in right away. Okay, so this is now going to wait for 60 seconds. And while that's happening, we can look at the logs here and see whether we got the transcript through. So, do, 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 accept recording, accept transcript, accept transcript, yes. So this got a body request, transcription status completed. Okay, so now I can run node and I'm going to get the query string uh, const qs equals require query string qs.parse of this entire URL yes so it gives us the transcription text which is perfect and it gives us the that's the URL we called the recording URL looks like nobody answered try again nice call status in progress does it give me the SID of the call call SID yes okay so here's the plan we're going we're now going to send a text from the from the serverless to my phone and that text will then have the ability to uh, it's going to show me the transcript and it's going to show me the recording URL so that I can listen to the recording if I want to and after that it will continue the it will finish up the call so accept recording accept transcript here we're now going to try sending a, oh first of all let's parse so const qs oh, import qs from query string like that and we say uh, const let's see what do we need we're going to need the recording URL we're going to need the recording URL we're going to need the transcription text and the call SID call SID from what's this um, no const equals qs dot parse event dot body like that um, oh and event body might not exist if there is no event body eh, let's just say that it's always going to be there event body is always defined if event dot body is not defined then we have much bigger issues to deal with and I don't want to deal with that right now I'm also going to need to get more water so console log the event now let's send a text how do I send a text I always forget that part too Erperm, send sending yourself an SMS message like this okay so I'm going to start with an insecure implementation of this and then I will rotate the keys later. So we say like this. We're going to get them from the environment variables or something. Let's if let's just let's hard code for now. Twilio from Twilio then when, once we have Twilio we are going to say const uh, account sid equals blah this should come from AWS uh, secrets storage but I'm lazy const 
uh, of token is blah and I'm pretty sure I can rotate these guys so I'm going to do it the lazy way for now let's see user settings can I rotate these I better be able to rotate them authenticate to make changes okay verify show matching site this one paste verify okay so general change time zone uh, let's go to Pacific just so that uh, Los Angeles America Los Angeles change time zone perfect change password status email um the word profile is that what i need seeking okay no docs console why do i always forget where to get the account sid oh there we go account sid so let's copy this thing and well i hope i can regenerate these Hmm. So I'm not sure if I can regenerate my tokens. Twilio generate new auth token. Auth tokens and how to change them. Let's see. Ah, okay. Scroll down to the API credentials in the pop-up dialog, click request token. I icon okay okay cool so I'm gonna change the battery in my camera Ow. Do, do, do. okay let's see am I back Okay, I should be back. I am back. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to do this the lazy way, but there's a AWS secret stuff that works. I haven't used it in a while, but you know, it should be fine. Where's my token now? I'm just gonna rotate these after the stream. I think I will. Okay, I'll figure that out later. We'll rotate these secrets after the stream. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate those afterwards. Now, we've got that. Let's see, how do I send a text message? So we're going to say const client equals new Twilio with the Account Sid and the auth token like that. What? New expression whose target lacks function Twilio. Okay, like that. Huh. Okay, so that works. So then we can say client dot come on client dot messages dot create so we're going to here create a body it's going to say uh, there's someone at the door mm. And I'm going to put in the transcription text like that. Okay. Bam. Then we can add a recording URL. Recording URL. Uh, recording like that. And then a, a new, new line. 
in that new new line then we're going to say reply yes to let them in okay so what is this compare property 2 is missing yes yes so 2 is going to be first for now we're going to just start with my phone number uh, 537 5963 and then we're going to say from is going to be this same phone number that we're using so that should also be let's add it here so the environment variable uh, phone number is going to be where did we put it accept recording accept transcript answer call and this phone number so we go back to accept transcript bam and we say plus one two oh five five two five eight nine nine zero oh actually no that's what it needs to say here so serverless yaml phone number blah like that and then we go back to accept record accept transcript this is going to say process.env.phone number okay so this is the this is a now an environment variable called phone number so every um, everything will have access to it we send that <coughs> Um, and then we should see okay so now we're at the step where it sends me a phone uh, text and let's see if that works git status wow. uh, vim dot get ignore we should also ignore serverless dot serverless git status and we say git at um, git rm dot serverless star me minus f git status okay git at dot git commit minus a minus m we're going to say we now accept the transcript we now pa pause the phone call accept the transcript and send the text pause call accept transcript send text okay git push origin master oh, no i'm not gonna send it to master just yet let's do yarn deploy and hopefully nobody is taking this opportunity to steal my authentication tokens for twilio which is exactly why i'm gonna rotate them afterwards so now when this deploys we should be able to initiate a phone call record our voice and then get a transcript as a text to my phone we'll see we'll see if that works come on okay it's going to take a little while but i think it's going to be worth it once it gets there what is mm hmm My girlfriend wants me to get a beanbag for the office because it also there's a new type of beanbag that also converts to an actual bed. Not sure how I feel about that just yet. Okay, let's see. Come on, deploy. While this is deploying, I'm gonna go get some water from the new bathroom that I have in my office, which is really cool. All right, so this deployed. Now let's try initiating a phone call. So I'm calling this thing, speaker. Welcome to our place. What do you want? Answer after the beep, then press any key. Hello, this is the live stream speaking. May we come in? All right, now let's see if I got a text. Did I get a text message? 
I did not get a text message. Now, why did I not get a text message? Um, hmm. Let's see. We can go into Twilio and look at phone numbers or all products and services. Programmable SMS. Why is programmable SMS acting up? Did we actually try to send a text? No, nope, we did not try to send a text. Okay, so we can go into CloudWatch and see what accept transcript actually did. So, got that. It console logged the event, but it didn't actually send a text message. Hmm. Why did it not Looks send? Like nobody answered. Try again. Okay, so nobody answered. Try again. Why did it not? Uh... Okay, let's try. Let's try doing it in Node directly, and then see what happens. So Node, we import Twilio from Twilio, like that. Ah. Uh, const Twilio equals require Twilio. Okay, then we say count Sid and auth token, bam, and we're going to recording URL is going to be blah 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 I don't really care right now and const uh, transcription text is going to be hello this is us okay now we create a new client that worked and when I say client messages dot create API Twilio. Okay, did that work? Did it send me a text? It did not send me a text. Oh, because it doesn't know process in the phone number. Uh, let's change this as well. Process in the phone number to this. Okay, now let's see, does this part work? Does it create the message body? Yes, it does create the message body. That worked. So now if I go client message create, enter, it says state pending. Oh, I know what's wrong. We aren't awaiting. Um, what if we say, okay. Let's see, await client messages create. Uh, why did I end, end everything? Let's try that again. So I'm gonna go into node and I'm going to say const Twilio equals require Twilio. We require Twilio, then we get the token ID and the SID. Uh, I create that. <laughs> And then I'm going to create an async function, async function that I am going to call right away. So async function that awaits for client messages dot create with body being hello Swiss and then two plus one six five zero five two seven five nine six three from plus one two oh uh, plus one two oh five five two five eight nine nine zero like that and I call it right away and we see what happens why doesn't it send it's not sending me any of the messages mm. okay what if we try that instead so Plant messages create dot then uh, message console log message because I think that's the problem I think the problem is we're not waiting for the text to come 
So I'm going to say hello Swiss here and then copy paste this into my node and we will see what happens. Why are you, uh, why? Const Twilio equals required Twilio and then them and const client blah and now I can paste this stuff can I? I should be able to okay copy pasta enter okay now it actually sent so I should have a text here now no so it said date sent outbound api error code null error message none uh, price unit dollars sms status queued sub resource uris something something now let's see if it did actually send so programmable sms logs we have this message that was delivered to 6505375963 message created sent delivered do I actually have that message I do not uh, hey CM Griffin how are you doing so mr. sir okay hello twitch people um it's saying that it's sending the text but i am not getting the text which is a problem you can update your time zone under your user settings blah delivered 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 there's someone at the door this was also supposed to have been delivered Arr. apply yes to let them in hmm yeah I don't know why this isn't sending my texts okay well uh, CM Griffin I'm doing pretty well I am just trying to figure out why these texts aren't going through but I think I've solved at least this for this 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 first part so it's supposed to send me a text from let's do process.env.phone number and just in case i'm going to console log that console log blah process.env.phone number now uh, pro let's see console paste so that's going that's supposed to go to my phone number which I guess might be blocking some stuff at the carrier level. Um, wow, 21 viewers. Did somebody press a button or, or something on Twitch? I don't, I don't really, I'm not that familiar with Twitch. So now the question is, when I get a reply to this SMS, how do I know, ah, you raided me, nice. That's awesome. Um, so what are Twitch raids? How do people do, what do people usually do with those? Let's see if I can figure out now when, when I get a, oh nice. Um, so the thing I'm, wor I'm trying to figure out now, now is when somebody gets to my, when I send a text, I need to get a reply to that text. Where does that go? So we're going to need to do what? Wow, raiding is, I should do more Twitch raids. Um, I'm, I'm pretty bad with Twitch, to be honest. I just stream there, I don't really, I don't know how the, how the lingo works or how Twitch works or the community or anything like that. So I'm going to create now a new, uh, for, to handle SMS reply. So let's see, I'm going to copy, uh, source accept what was it called accept recording yeah to source handle as sms reply 
multiply.ts. Okay, so we got that. Now we're going to make a new lambda handler for it here. And we say handler is this slash handle sms reply dot handler uh, with an event that is HTTP path handle SMS reply method post and course true. Okay, so I got that part. Now I need to go into handle SMS reply and this one is going to do what? Send text and we go here get SMS reply send dial tone to correct phone call and this is where it's going to be tricky it's going to be tricky to know which phone call we're supposed to send it to but for starters I'm going to uh, let's see twimmel what should we do twimmel dot messaging response and we're going to message with uh, okay let's console log the event first console log event so we're console logging that and then we so console log event const response and the response should say what we need a messaging response now messaging response uh, I know it exists, API reference, call resource, conference resource, voice SMS, programmable SMS. We're looking for Twimmel now to know what kind of media resource, service message resource, Twimmel overview. <coughs> okay, response, messaging, response, message. So we say, messaging new messaging response and we what does the redirect do here uh, to twimmel control okay so const let's see const uh, message equals response dot message and we say message.body is going to be letting them, them in. Okay, so response.message, twimmel verb. Ah, we can just say it like this. Response.message, letting them in, like that. And then we send that to twimmel. So we respond with a twimmel. Now when I'm texting this phone number, I should be able, God damn it, I added, I used the wrong one. So this needs to go back. 4.1, if call still going, tell visitor to try again. Okay, handle SMS reply. This is where the new stuff goes. So like that. So we get the event, we, and then we respond with a text message. And now I should be able to deploy this and get a, I'll just show you. So I now yarn deploy, yarn deploy. And now I'll be able to text this particular phone number and get a response back. And I'll see how I can parse the text message that I sent to the phone number on the server so that I can know what to do with the original phone call. This is where things are getting really tricky. Okay, so this is deploying. That's gonna take like a minute or so. I, th I feel like I'm making pretty good progress considering we've been at it for maybe two hours. It's almost probably another hour and it's gonna be done and usable via SMS and then I'm probably going to say it's good enough. Probably. Okay. Um, and I don't know why despite 
these messages having been sent see it says delivered but I never actually got the text which is kind of a bummer but we'll figure it out okay we have Okay, come on, deploy. How's my data download going? Okay, that's still checking. Okay, so we now have the handle SMS reply function, which I'm gonna go configure in Twilio where I have phone numbers. So phone numbers, per, 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 active numbers, come on. I know you're there apartment doorbell we are going to change the messaging URL apartment doorbell mess calls log messages log nice okay so I can now go configure webhook for this so handle SMS reply HTTP post got that now I can try texting this phone number and I should get a reply back so let's see so I'm gonna text new message to what's it called 205-525-8990 okay so I have that and I'm going to text something random I don't know if you can see that so I'm texting that. Did it send? No. Okay, text. And I should get a reply back if everything works. I got a reply and it said letting them in. That's the reply that I'm sending here. So that part works. I now have the second part of the loop of the whole interaction loop working. And I can go check what the how we can parse the response that I get. Like not the response, how we can parse the uh, submitted text or the sent text okay handle SMS reply request context body let's parse the body so I'm gonna go back into node let's say const const qs equals require query string and we say qs dot parse this entire thing and let's see what we get we get the SMS message as I uh, the message identifier the SMS SID num segments message SID API version and we get the body okay so now we have to parse the body to be um, okay so we're gonna have to parse the body and when we we're gonna have to save in a dynamo db or something the mapping from message ids to call ids because that way we're gonna be able to actually continue with the phone call uh yes let's try that so we say do we need twimmel yes we're gonna need twimmel and we're gonna need send twimmel what else do we need? We also need uh, import QS from query string. So we say const body and SMS hmm. So I don't know where we get Hmm. So that's one. That's a problem. I don't know the latest. How do I map? How do I map this to a particular phone call? That would be. That's going to be interesting to know. So we have the SMS message SID, but I don't know what that is. Um, where is my hello world how to receive and reply to sms messages let's see the tutorial for that that seems useful node.js 
So we post SMS, the robots are coming, head for the hills. Uh, so body parser, Twilio, what is a webhook? Generating Twimmel in your web application. Log into Twilio, black up. So that's the thing, it's not associated with the user's phone number because there is no user. Somebody comes to my, to my uh, front door buzzer and calls me and that then that gets intercepted with Twilio. Twilio replies to them, gets a recording and then Twilio knows the identifier of that call and sends me a text. So Twilio is going to know the identifier of the last call so maybe they can maybe Twilio can just save the latest call and assume that uh, I want to know if I can know which text I'm replying to if I can do that then it's easy if I can't custom responses enhance messages with add-ons where to next are So how do I know what I'm replying to? That would make the most sense. Or I know which phone number it came from, don't I? Okay, so I know which phone number it came from, right? Let's see, I know it's to my phone number. Oh, so I can identify it with the phone number. Uh, yeah, I know which door I want to open but I need to connect to the phone call that's already going on at that door. Um, so that's why I need to keep that in the database. Yes, All right. so we're gonna get the body and we're gonna get the two number because the two number is technically unique for each, uh, for each box, for each door even though right now this is just me using it, but it's a unique, a unique phone number for each box. So we can say const body equals qs.parse of event.body body. And we're going to say that this is always defined because if it's not defined, then we have trouble, no? Event.body. Event body is defined, we get the response and the message, and then we say, um, okay, so if body dot to lowercase, come on, body dot to lowercase, okay, whatever, no? Property does not exist on type string or string blah. What? Object null prototype QS dot parse. So we get, yeah. We should get the two number. Um, body as string maybe will that make it work body is string to lowercase then we say if body to string as lowercase uh, body as string to lowercase if that contains no dot include dot includes yes then we open the door else don't open the door. Okay, so we're gonna open the door or not open the door. We're going to, either way, we're going to um, return open door with the two number or return um, close door, close door with the two number. Okay, so then we have async async function open door with the phone, uh, phone number which is a string right and that will then make a message letting them in and, re and reply with that cool and close door 
that. So, um, so this part texts user user that door is opening uh, hooks into ongoing phone call sends dial tone okay into on on go wow my typing is terrible today sends dial tone texts user that door is not opening hooks into ongoing phone call tells them to go away async function close door come on async function close door phone number is a string again and then we're going to say const response equal uh, i'm just going to copy this letting them in telling them to go away telling them to go away okay so we've got that part now we need a way to get the sid for the phone call based on the phone number that i'm texting to to s string okay man. to s string okay we've got that so now we can make a commit get status get at dot get commit minus m minus m handle sms reply okay now here where we are accepting the transcript we get the phone number so this is still something i need to debug a little bit more because i'm not getting this text message when i send it i'm not sure why but here i'm going to save the call sid and the phone number um this one so this should in theory not come from there do we does the transcript give us that stuff let's see if we have it somewhere um hello swiss SID is the SM, oh no, that's the other stuff. So I'm trying to look for where I was debugging the transcript to see if it tells me the phone number it came from, because that would make life a lot easier. Transcription SID called, yes, perfect. Okay, so from plot two, okay, so we're gonna get here, to and we're going to uh wait it's gonna make it easier wait that's the recording sid transcription type fast blah where was i damn it i lost my place where is the transcript <coughs> that's the recording url transcription type fast transcription url transcription text call SID oh nice we get a call SID yes okay even better so we get the call SID oh so we get the call SID but we also need to know the phone number forwarded from to caller from recording status called so we're gonna use called so that's the called phone number we're using that one here and while i'm here i'm going to save something in dynamodb so that i have a um what do i need i need to basically save save call sid called pair uh, so we're saving that pair for lookup in sms handler right so we're saving that and then when the sms comes in we know what the sms was sending to we look at that phone number and the latest call sid um and then we can go from there i think yes from called as string 
cool. Now let's see how do I do DynamoDB. I have a wrapper on DynamoDB built but I'm not gonna use it because I'm well I am gonna use it I'm just going to do some copy pasting here this is the kind of stuff I really need to put in a framework don't I um, I feel like that would make life a lot easier spark joy because if I make a framework that can generate this stuff it's going to be easier to both um, do this stuff and to hmm, yeah I, need, I really need to make that so we're gonna take this stuff and we're gonna create not a widget stable but a call stable and the call stable is going to come from an environment variable calls table we don't need to save the phone number anymore so we have the service we have the calls so call stable to stage region blah and now I need to add it as resources down here so we're going to have resources calls table type is AWS DynamoDB because that's easy table and that's going to have properties attribute definitions when we're going to be looking it up based on the phone number right that's going to be the easiest way yeah so we're going to have attribute name of um, what should it be phone number let's just call it phone number that's going to be easiest phone number attribute type is a string and then we have the uh, table name of self provider environment calls table like that and we say the do we need a key schema yes key schema attribute come on attribute name phone number which is the key type of range because it can have many of them right so every time we're going to save it with a create a death timestamp or should we just override them because there's there's always going to be just one yeah we're going to be overriding them because there's always going to be only one ongoing phone call right Yes, so there's always only one latest phone call, which means we don't need to we don't need to over-engineer this stuff. So we have a hash key from phone numbers to call SID. Now we're going I'm going to go into backend here and copy pasta the DynamoDB TS because that's a helper file I'm used to using. Uh, touch source dynamodb.ts god damn it move source dynamodb source dynamodb.ts dynamodb.ts copy pasta uh, let's see the dynamodb client oh, I need to yarn add AWS SDK and the types for it as well yarn add, add types slash aws sdk so we have the update item which is an upsert and that update item will yeah cool so i'm going to let's not use uh, yeah let's do call stable here and put that as the default table for everything because that makes life a little bit easier call stable come on const call stable okay so we now have the it's almost like an ORM a very thin wrapper on DynamoDB I have plans to expand it and make it easier to use I just haven't had time so we go into handle not handle SMS reply but 
where is it accept recording scratchpad index where is it answer call accept transcript so we say uh, update item which gets auto imported and what is the update item going to need update item params we don't need the table name but we're going to say await update item which is going to have a key of uh, key that says phone number is called that's the key that we're updating and we're going to update it with update expression uh, what's the update expression going to be I always forget how those work update expression ah there we go update expression set we are saying call SID no, let's do it call Sid equals call Sid and created at equals dot created at like that then we have expression attribute values which are call Sid is call Sid and created at it's always a good idea to save when your created at stuff is going we're going to say new new date to ISO string like that so that should now update our item call said what what's it complaining about string or string is not assignable to string number or no call said as string now it's gonna be happy right Wow, come on. Okay, so the typing for this stuff is a little annoying. Okay, now it's gonna be happy. Okay, cool. So we have the phone number where we're putting in the called as a string. We're updating the call SID, the created at, and then we're doing the same thing here. Now, uh, this saves the the pair for lookup in the SMS handler. In the SMS handler then, we can go here and we say get item. Uh, so we say const, um, what are we going to get? What does get item return? Get item, get item, come on. I know you're in there, you aren't get item really I was so oh because you're in DynamoDB uh, so I'm kind of get item gets the key and then returns just the whatever the return is and the return is going to be right so we're going to say const call Sid equals get item did it import or uh, Come on, import. Nope, didn't want to import. Import get item from dot slash DynamoDB. And we are getting the item for key that says phone number equals phone number. Like that. No? Call C it is declared, but its value is never read. Yes, fine, fine. So we're getting that item. And now, how do we hook into the phone call and alter what it's saying? That's going to be an interesting part. So I'm in Twimmel. Twimmel, Twimmel, programmable voice. Let's see. So we have voice, voice API call resources, conference resources, mm, how to modify calls in progress. That looks, hi iMobi. The new place is actually really amazing. I don't know if you can hear a lot of echo right now. 
It's uh, I still need to decorate my office, set everything up, get some soundproofing foam and stuff like that. But other than that, we're pretty much moved in. Uh, the bird is coming home tonight, so that's going to be fun. And I'm hoping that I can get this stuff finished so that we can open the front door without having to really worry about weird phone numbers and stuff. So let's see. Client calls. Aha. So I can just update it like this. Perfect. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have two responses now. Do, do, do. So that's the call Sid. And then we're going to call... Oh, nice. I'm happy there's not a lot of echo. So we're letting them in. Then we can... What can we do in the meantime? Ah, just... Okay, so we're not letting them in. Just... Okay. Uh, op we're going to call open the door. Because we're sending this after the call is done. Open the door and told them to go away. So I'm going to get the call set here and I get it here from the database. Um, and we have to here do what? Um, open door. So open door. Okay. Continue call. We're going to send in the call SID and we're going to send uh, true or false. Let's just do true or false because that's going to be easier. Continue call true false. And now here we say async fun. Come on, async function continue call, which has a call sid, which is a string, and open door, which is a boolean like that okay so now how do we continue the call I'm copying that stuff from here again this is going to be uh, this should come from AWS secret storage and I'm going to rotate it later do I need to await continue call you're right I do need to await continue call thank you Jesse Skinner await continue call now We're going to say const client equals uh, Twilio account SID and auth token. Like that, we need to import Twilio. Okay. Cannot find name Twilio. I just added it, damn it. Import Twilio from Twilio. Will that make you happy, TypeScript? It will, okay. Call Sid does not exist on type get item output. What does get item output look like then? Get item, get item params. It returns get item output, which looks like what? Ah, so we have the item, which then has an attribute map. So we go here to handle SMS reply, accept request. Recording handle SMS reply get item dot item that's gonna work. Dot. Wait, do I don't I have to await that? I do. Okay, let's do it like this. Uh, what's it called? We are awaiting that, and it we're getting a row. Um, call Sid. Mm -hmm. No, let's let's just say this is an item. So item dot call Sid, and that's going to be easier. Call Sid does not exist on item blah. Okay, that's also something we need to handle. So we're going to say if item, then we do that. Otherwise, we're going to handle it as an error and we're going to say 
no uh, no ongoing call no ongoing call only text this number in response to a message and let's add an emoji to make this a little bit nicer come on why doesn't it exist so we get item output which returns a map of attribute names to attribute value objects as specified by projection expression Ah, okay, do I need to do it this way? Where are you? DynamoDB handle SMS reply. Like that, that's gonna work, okay. So, okay, so we've got that. Hmm, I could actually I should totally get that here already. Yes, let's move that code. So I'm gonna do it like this. We're gonna say const item like that. And then we're, then we're going to parse the body and handle errors up here. That way it's going to be a little easier. So we're gonna get the call SID here. Okay, call SID, call SID, and then we get call SID. Text user that door is not opening, hooks into ongoing phone call, tells them to go away. And here we send the dial tone, and here, if the item exists, we need to get the two, that's the phone number, to a string. Okay, so we get the phone number, we get the item. If the item exists, then we parse the body and we decide whether we're opening the door or closing the door. Otherwise, we're saying, hey, there's nothing going on here. Maybe you shouldn't just text this phone number. Okay. Um, you are well. Actually, I'm Obi. That you, they don't need an await because they're returning. So <clears throat> you can always return a promise from a promise, and assume that somebody up the chain is awaiting. There's no need to return a wait here because you can return a promise directly. Um, and I personally think that's that's a better approach. <clears throat> so we are continuing the call. We get the SID and then the client. We're going to say client calls, call SID. And then we're going to update it with a Twimmel response. And here we're going to await we're going to send that update and then we're going to just return true right uh, i don't know what kind of error could happen ah i know what kind of error could happen so we're going to try and we're going to catch an error and return false Come on, return false. Now, here we're going to say const success equals continue call and const success equals await continue call. <clears throat> we await the client. Here we then need to create a const response equals twimmel dot voice response. And we say oh, new twimmel voice response like that. And we gotta say response dot say um, if we are opening the door door is buzzing or buzzing you in buzzing you in sorry 
or sorry residents said no Residents said you can't come in. Okay, so we ha we're buzzing them in or we're saying re resident said you can't come in. Now I'm going to check in my old version of this code what I did to, let's see, where are you? Um, what did I do to buzz them in? Because I think this is going to have the same system where you press a number on the dial pad and that lets them in. So let's see, door answer bot. Come on, I know you're here. Uh, reposit I have 241 repositories. Holy shit. Door answer bot. Node modules, routes. So it was in routes in index.js. So the, back then I was using Express.js. I think the version with, oh, my flux is coming on. I think the version with serverless lambdas is much easier to use and to understand. Open the door, Twimmel play digits nine. Okay. So response say buzzing you in and response say uh, digits nine. I think that's gonna work. Oh, play digits nine. Play digits nine. Okay, let's see. How do I play a digit? Twimmel, twimmel, voice. Let's see. Voice, how do I send? Call resource, twimmel. Where are you, twimmel? Twimmel, twimmel. Connect, dial, play, pause, pay, play. Play, loop digits. Okay, so we can play the digits attribute lets you play DTMF tones. Ah, it's not. If you need to test an IVR system, you can use this feature to simulate digits being pressed to navigate through the menu options. If you're dialing a phone number and need to play to enter the extension, you should use the blah. Um, oh, using digits. Here we go. <clears throat> nah. Digits www3. We can add a few leading W characters to add a pause. Each W character ca tells Twilio to wait 0 0.5 seconds. Okay, so let's do W9, and that's going to wait half a second and then send stuff. And now here I can say response. Come on, response dot to string. Now this should magically just work. Uh, ah, but rather we can do it this way. If open door, then we do this stuff. Otherwise we do other stuff. So come on. So but instead of buzzing you in, it will say, sorry, residents said you can't come in. Otherwise, it's going to buzz them in. Okay, so I'm going to deploy this now and we're going to just go for it and see if it works. I am not very confident right now because as you may have noticed, I wrote a lot of code without testing, but I have high hopes. Okay. Let's see, will this deploy? And then will I get a text when I try it? So it's deploying, come on. And then as it's deploy, after it deploys, we're just gonna go for it and try the entire sequence. Cause you know, 
at worst it's not gonna work but if it works it's going to be a super victorious moment because we're gonna have oh damn bad indentation of a mapping entry at line 11 line 11 Uh, okay, deploy again. Well, so so much for writing a lot of code and then having it just work right away, right? We are waiting to see what happens. Wow, it's raining so hard outside. Okay. Come on. Er, bad indentation. At line 18 how did that there we go okay now it's gonna work well at least now it's going to deploy and when it deploys I'm hoping the code itself is just gonna work and if it doesn't well who knows how is the data download going oh it's still checking okay so it turns out downloading two terabytes of data is quite intense and I have no idea how we're going to visualize that when it's time for that project. All right. Yeah, fingers crossed and thumbs pressed. Me too. Uh, it's just taking a while to deploy probably actually I'm not even sure what's taking so long maybe the CPU is just very tired from working so hard ah yes 352 percent just for OBS <clears throat> I think I need more water Also, wow, how, is, how long have I been streaming already? We are at two and a half hours. It's actually not, not bad progress for two and a half hours, if you ask me. Um, it might have helped that I've done this before, even if it was three years ago. But I really need to open source some of these tools that I'm using, sh shouldn't I? Um, um, um. But we've got, we built a bunch of lambdas. And this is a really cool example of how you can use lambdas to make a service work together with stuff and things. I'll, I don't know what I was going to say. But I think this is a really cool example of, of the power of serverless. And just of what cool APIs are out there these days. So let's see. You guys think I should productize this? Would people pay like five bucks a month to have their buzzers with SMS? Call stable, property provision through throughput cannot be empty. Okay. Uh, let's see, what is provisioned throughput? We're gonna go back to the SparkJoy project because that one has that stuff. Spark joy, come on, we're almost ready to deploy. Serverless YAML. So we need this stuff. Key schema. Provision throughput. Read capacity units one, whatever that means and write capacity units one yarn deploy come on deploy yourself okay so i'm hoping it deploys now 
we'll see. Uh, camera is starting to run out of battery. How's everyone doing so far? Is, has anyone been watching this whole time? I'm curious. <laughs> uh, nice, Jesse Skinner came in with the raid. Well, I hope you're I hope you're entertained. I don't know where you came from, um, but yeah. I don't I don't actually know how entertaining these streams are. I use them mostly as an excuse to. Uh, to focus and to code on interesting projects that I find curious But I'm not really sure how great they are for watching Do you guys watch a lot of live coding and stuff like that or is it usually? Recordings and then you script skip through a bunch of it That's what I'm curious about because I'm not really it's not like I'm doing it as a talk, right? Maybe I should do more of those have prepared live streams where I'm giving an actual more like a webinar experience. That could be interesting. Oh, nice. So what are you working on right now, Jesse Skinner? Okie doke. Nice. Interaction and chat, yeah. I like those parts as well. It makes it a lot less lonely when you're coding on interesting projects okay so i'm now gonna try calling that phone number again and in theory it should tell me to wait send me a text and then i should be able to reply to that text but we'll see what happens okay so i'm calling the phone number Hi, can I come in? Thank you. Someone will let you in right away. Okay. So now I should be having a text here. Yes, it says there's someone at the door. The transcript is undefined, but let's see if I reply yes. What happens? I replied yes. And it said it opened the door, but I don't think it did actually open the door. Interesting. So let's drop this phone call. So that part almost worked. I got the, I got a text that said undefined transcript. I got the recording and I replied yes to let them in. And then I got a reply on text saying it opened the door but it did not actually continue the phone call why not also let's see if we go into handle sms reply did we get any errors here now well, that seems to have worked pretty well um, let's look at dynamodb 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 tables, if we go to doorbell app calls, dev, there should be an item here with, my, with the phone number and the call SID, and then created at when it was created. Cool, so that pretty much works. Now I just need to figure out why it wasn't continuing the phone call. Let's see, accept transcript. Okay, so why was the transcript undefined? Transcription text. Mm -hmm -hmm. It didn't get the transcription text. Let's see, transcript. Okay, so it didn't get the transcription text, which is fine, but it did know when I replied so when we go into handle sms now where is it handle sms reply <clears throat> here it texted open the door so this part finished 
ah, it didn't actually finish. It just says, let's console log the error. Console log the error. And let's actually look at the success. So if success, then we text back that everything was fine. Otherwise, we const message equals response.message something went went wrong. Okay, like that. So return. Eh. Um, right. Let message and we say message equals blah. Okay, and then here we say let message and if success we send back open the door otherwise we say we say message equals response dot message something went wrong okay nope like that so we have the response blah and here we are console logging the error just in case because I think something did in fact go wrong. And we're gonna see here, let's also console log the SID that we get. So while we're here, I can actually console log the item. Console log item. Oh, that went, that's what went wrong. Item.callSid. I forgot to do that part. Ha. Item dot call Sid, and then we yarn yarn deploy, and we're gonna try that again, and I think this time it's actually going to work. And I'm running out of water. I'm gonna grab some more water. All right. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Waiting for that thing to finish, still waiting. Let's see how it goes. Okay, come on, checking stack update progress. It's still the it's still going. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so now I can uh call that phone number that's the same as somebody being at the door where is it phone call okay so we're on speaker welcome to our place what do you want answer after the beep then press any key hello we are here to open the door Okay, so I should have gotten a text now. Come on. Where is the text? Why didn't I get a text? Okay, what if I just reply, ha, now I got a text. Hello, we are here to open the door. And I can say yes, send. And yes. So it did in fact buzz me in. Yes. Okay, so that worked, and I should have gotten a reply. Uh, that didn't. That part didn't quite work. Let's see why didn't why didn't the bot tell me that it let somebody in? Mm -hmm. 
Let's see, get status, get at source, get commit minus say. Uh, so we've got the full loop working. Full loop to buzzing someone in. Okay, now I need to figure out what went wrong so we didn't get the CloudWatch. CloudWatch. Mm -hmm. Logs, log groups. And we can look at accept recording, handle SMS reply. So error, error type, error message, cannot read property to string of undefined. So what was undefined? Okay, we got the phone number and stuff that worked. So uh, I can delete that. Now, error type, error message, object exports, where was this? Log uh, error continuing call. Is that where it went wrong? Because it said buzzing you in and then, which means it should have worked. Is this where it failed? Aha, it is, th this is where it failed. Message response dot message, perfect. Cool, now let's see in the old one, in the, um, the Slack bot version of this, repositories, Slack, door answer Slack bot. So here I'm gonna look at the routes and just look at exactly what kind of digits I sent and whether there was a pause afterward, afterwards because I feel like um, mm. okay, and let's use voice Alice because I think that's going to be easier or just like nicer. Buzzing you in, voices Alice, no? Okay. Okie doke. So this I think will work. Digits nine. Uh, okay, I, I'm gonna try that and see if that works. Buzzing you in, that should be a pause afterwards. And what else can I do? I can, should we use a female voice or the male voice? Yeah, I feel like we can leave it with the male voice. Here, except recording or answer call here. If nobody buzzes you in, answer, welcome, welcome. What do you want? Answer after the beep, then press any key. And then in the accept recording, thank you, someone will let you in right away. And then if the, if there is a, if the, if nothing happens after the pause, we can say, looks like nobody answered, try calling a real human. Okay, someone will let you in right away. Perfect, now let's yarn deploy this baby and try again. And I think that's, that's a working implementation, a good result for three hours of hacking, I hope. I just need to, well, I could productize this. I'm not sure yet if it's worth productizing. Um, and my camera battery died, so we can replace the camera battery. Bam. Okay, got the camera battery. Mm -hmm. 
Am I moving? I am moving indeed. Now let's see if this deploys. Then I need to make this so that it sends the text to multiple people. Because it needs to handle SMS reply, accept recording, DynamoDB, accept transcript here. This needs to go through. So we go uh, for recipient in recipients. Is it or is it for off? I always forget the difference between for in and um, I use the Brave browser. So yeah, the Brave browser because I like it and it's using Chrome. I don't really like Safari that much. Let's just test the difference between for in and for off because I always forget. For let a of three four blah console log a. There we go. Okay, so it's for off. So for let oh server. I don't use the built-in server. Sorry. I I usually use either a small node server or I just deploy things to Zite or whatever. A lot of the CLI tools for projects come with built-in servers nowadays, so there's really no need to um, should be configurable in DB. Yeah, there's really no need to um, use the built-in server these days, I think. So recipients are me and my girlfriend. So we have that. And then what else do we need? We need my girlfriend's number. I can add that in a little bit. Um, and I also need to make sure that Mm. Hmm. Some resource to learn that will be more grateful. So I'm currently working on this serverless handbook.dev, uh, which is specifically for serverless stuff. And I'm also going to write, I'm most likely going to write a blog about this entire project and explain it almost like a tutorial on my blog. And if you subscribe to my newsletter, you're going to get it there as well. Um, so I mostly use this, these videos as research, but then I post articles about it and stuff like that. So I don't, I hope that kind of answers your question. Um, I probably need to do a better job of all of that. So let's see. We need to know whether the call was already handled if we're sending it to two people. Mm -hmm. So handle SMS reply here. Let's see when it's handled. Return open door, return close door. We need to update the item, don't we? So we await open door and we await close door and then we say update item ah uh, let's see how do we do this Mm. So we have to return to get a response. How, where do we save that it was already handled? Here, if success, this is where we have to save it. So update item, we're going to update the calls table. Mm -hmm. So where do we have accept recording, accept transcript. Uh, we're going to use this. So handle SMS reply 
if success we are updating the item and we're saying phone number is phone number so we're gonna need to get that Doo -doo -doo. to s string here so open door and close door they're both going to need to update that update the item come on import update item from DynamoDB and here and okay so let's do that update item phone number is phone number string uh, Josh Manders yes I am in the new office the bird is currently at the bird hotel so that we could deal with moving and Thanksgiving and stuff and he's coming home tonight and I'm sure he's going to have quite a shock mm, so we're going to say handled equals handled and should we save handled at eh, let's just save handled now let's do handled at it gives you more information <coughs> so handled ah handled at where was i handled at becomes the new string and we need to do the same thing in uh what's this in closed door so um phone number string phone number string so we're saying here this is come on really vs code um flag oh thanks josh i'm really happy about the new office i'm still waiting to know for I, I hired an interior designer to tell me how to organize the space and what kind of furniture to get so i'm waiting to hear back from her and then i'm going to have a really cool office i hope so we're flagging flag call as handled handled and we're gonna flag it as handled here now over here if the item exists then we are going to say if item dot handled at <clears throat> then else we do this stuff so if the item is handled at uh, actually no we can do it this way if item or item and not item dot handled at like that so no ongoing call only text this number in response to a message so we can here we can also change this text so let's do response dot message text uh, message hmm let's say let message is message response message actually no we can do it this way so I need to make sure that the message is different if the call was already handled or if there's no call Whew. and we're going to do that like this we're going to say if item dot if item and uh, and not item handled at now if the item exists so if there's no item then our message let's just do it this way let text equals this so that's our text uh, response message of text like that so now if the item exists call was found uh, if item dot created if item dot handled at exists so if the call was found and it's not it, and it hasn't been handled 
handled at and uh, item dot created at new date of created at is less than <clears throat> 60 seconds ago um, and not outdated and not outdated item we're gonna save that in a little bit so if the item has already been handled then we say text equals someone else already answered the door else if outdated item then we say text equals uh, the call is you can't you missed the you missed the 60 second timeout okay you missed the 60 second timeout and now for the outdated i'm just gonna i'm gonna put it here function outdated item which uh and it returns a boolean so we say function Hey Marcin, um, Sparkjoy is currently kind of slow. I need to. There's a bunch of bugs on it, and I need to fix those. I've been, I've been starting to use it in news in my newsletters, and I need to fix a bunch of bugs before I can start actually asking other people to use it. But other than that, it's going pretty well. I'm just doing this hacky project because I need it for my new apartment. Okay, we're probably going to continue with Sparkjoy during the week. So outdated item, and that's doing what? Um, should I get... Mm, eh. ah, here we go. Return new, uh, return new date of item dot created at if that is older than new date minus er, 60 times 60 times 1000 no 60 times 1000 okay what is this complaining about not be applied to types date and number Sure it can. Mm -hmm. To number UTC to epoch. No, I know there is a converter to Unix time to time string to. Uh, Let's see. So if we do a number, let's see, new date minus 60 times 1000, okay? And if we do number of new date, okay, that works. It's cool. So number of new date item created that blah is less than. Hmm, like that and item is an any right yes let's make it an any for now so item is any it gets a created at and that means it's outdated so I'm going to yarn deploy this again and then we're gonna test it and I am pretty sure it's going to work and it's gonna be awesome Let's see. And then if it does work, I'm going to have to stop live coding and go back to helping my girlfriend move in. Because we still have a bunch of things to prepare for Kiwi coming home in an hour, hour and a half. All right. So that's deploying. Doo 
Do, do, do. On first error each day, I get a Twilio alert. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Up, up, up. That is still going. Let's see. Come on, deploy. Uh, I am not actually using AWS Amplify. I'm deploy. I'm using. I'm not even really sure. I haven't actually used AWS Amplify before. I'm mostly using just the serverless framework directly and deploying to AWS. Okay, so let's try this. I'm gonna go to, where is it? Utilities, settings, uh, phone calls, and we call. Hello, this is a test. Thank you. Okay. Someone will let you in right away. Cool, someone will let me in right away. And I can go to my texts. There should be a text here, come on. Send me a text. Oh, well, this, there we go. So, it said, shallow, this is A, as a transcript. And I reply with yes. Okay, so that buzzed me in and it texted me that it opened the door. Nice. Sweet. Okay, well, that's that. The system works. The t I get texts. I I'm able to reply to the texts. And then it buzzes me in and plays the dial tone for the, for the front door. So, yeah, great success. We got this in about three hours. Nice. That's a good hackathon project. Cool. I think there's needs there needs to be some. Oh, let's see. Let's make sure that it marked it as already handled. So if we go to log, no log, not log groups, DynamoDB, DynamoDB. I should now have a call SID there that says this was already handled. Mm, doorbell app calls dev items and voila, it has created that and I handled that. Nice. Oh, one other thing I need to do. When we update a new one here, we need to delete handle that because they are being overwritten. It's not, this isn't like a log, it just always saves one line and nothing more. Handled at uh, is null. Cool. Git status, git commit minus a minus m. So the Twilio services I ended up using were just SMS and voice, and that's pretty much it. Um, and now, now the real question is, should I productize this? Is this something that other people would use? And is it worth trying to find those people and giving them a service that they can use for this stuff? And then obviously, if I did that, I would have to do a little bit more work on top to make this more, um, you know, easier to use across different phone numbers and stuff. So git commit minus a minus m. We are adding a, what are we adding? Um, what am I adding is, ah, git log, git commit minus a minus m, handle multiple recipients. All right, and I'm gonna add my girlfriend's phone number here now. Plus one six, 
six five three. I think that's her number. I should probably know her number, shouldn't I? Okay. Perfect. Git push origin master and yarn deploy. And that's it. So thanks everyone for watching. I will probably write an article about this because this was fun and interesting and send it out to my newsletter soon. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you again when I, when I work on SparkJoy app, probably on Tuesday night. Bye.